kosher is one of the many laws of the Torah where God does not give us a reason for the law. We just don't know. We don't know why. But one thing we do know is that if someone's life is in jeopardy, then a person is allowed to eat non-kosher to save their life. So the question is discussed in the Code of Jewish Law, the Shulchan Aruch. What happens if someone, a mother is nursing her baby and the doctor says that the mother, for health reasons, must eat non-kosher food? So the Code of Jewish Law says not only is she allowed to consume non-kosher food, she is required, she's obligated to eat that non-kosher food to save her life. But the Code of Jewish Law adds something very strange. It says that after she consumes the non-kosher food, she should refrain from nursing her baby for 24 hours. It seems so strange. Why in the world would you have that restriction? The mother didn't violate anything eating the food. She was actually required to eat the food. The baby's not even obligated in commandments yet, and the baby's not even getting the non-kosher food directly. It's coming in a diluted fashion through the mother's milk. What could possibly be wrong here? And the Code of Jewish Law goes on to say that even though the baby's only getting a diluted amount through the nursing process, it could still cause negative character traits in the baby, in the child. The idea that you are what you eat can have significant ramifications within Judaism. You may notice that the kosher animals tend to be calmer animals, they're not predators, they're not lions, tigers, bears, none of those are kosher. And just like when it comes to physical food, if you eat protein and rich food, you'll get stronger. If you eat fattening food, you get fatter. Um, you know, they're food with cholesterol issues. There's all different, you know, nutrients that we get to help or hurt our bodies, our physical bodies with food that we eat. Our souls are also affected by the food that we eat. And consuming kosher food can actually help us to be less lazy, to be less angry, to be more patient, more tolerant, more loving, more caring, more sharing. So this is a tremendous power to the food that we eat. And like anything else in Judaism, it's not an all or nothing religion. So even if someone is not ready to fully keep kosher, that's a big thing. 100% kosher is very difficult. But a person can still find plenty of kosher products in the supermarkets. Most cereals are kosher. So every time we eat kosher food and have in mind, oh wow, this product right now, that's gonna be a kosher product. You have that in mind, use it as an opportunity to connect to the divine, you're also nourishing your soul at the same time. But I do wanna throw out a warning that as important as it is to be careful about what goes into our mouth, it's even more important to be careful and vigilant to watch what comes out of our mouth. Words of hate, words that put people down instead of building them up, words that embarrass others in public, insult other people, judge others. We were given a be so many beautiful gifts by our Creator, and our mouth is one of them. And like any other gift, our job is to appreciate it, but to use it and not to abuse it. So I want to give a blessing to each of us that we're able to take all of the gifts that God has given us and to use them to enrich our lives, to enrich the lives of all those around us, and ultimately to make the world a better place. Thank you all so much.